Hi guys, my name is Stavros. I'm the author of the Toma 6, book one of The Fateful Force, and I'm also a warbow archer. And today we're in Portsmouth, England, at the Mary Rose Museum. So let's head on in and see uh, what amazing stuff is here on display. Okay, so we're inside the Mary Rose Museum now. Yeah. What I'll be doing is, in order to respect the museum, you know, obviously people have to pay to get into this museum. I will be showing everything uh, in great detail. I'll be going more to the areas of interest for warbow archery and doing photos and small videos, but we're here inside and I'm really really excited to see what uh, is on offer inside the museum so bear with me and we'll be back with some more uh, great uh, footage and videos. Okay, so here we have the complement of the Mary Rose uh, uh, flagship of the Vice Admiral and what we can see is here the complement of the, of the soldiers that were on board so there's 185 soldiers that were split up into uh, one block of uh, archers for two blocks of piking and billmen and as well as some hand gunners that were on board. We also have some um, gunners for the cannons of the ship here but uh, we'll have a quick look at the, uh, at the diagram here. We can see what the complement of the actual ship was. There was 500 uh, men on board. Here we have is the uh, a really good statistics of the soldiers and the sailors that were on board. And we can see here on average the men were uh, 171 centimeters or five foot seven which is actually uh, the same height as I am, I'm about 170. So I'm representative of a average uh, person of this early 16th, mid 16th century uh, period. And that's actually quite significant for me because while everybody will have different dimensions for their limbs, as a warbow archer myself, my draw length is about 28 inches. And that's what I think would have been probably the norm for the period for warbow archers, something about 28 inches. Um, but certainly if it's an average, there are gonna be people that are gonna be taller and that will explain people having a higher draw length or a, or a longer draw length, I should say, for their bows, uh, as well as people that are gonna be shorter that would have to stretch to be able to get that 28 inch draw length. So I thought that was actually quite interesting. So here is the actual Mary Rose wreck itself, behind glass. It's actually really impressive in person. It's really, really impressive in person. I mean, this is actually quite interesting here. We can see two arrows that are in this uh, depiction of an injured uh, either sailor or soldier. And we can see from the arrowheads of the arrow that's in the lower thigh that it's actually a barbed arrow. So it's probably depicting a T16 or otherwise known as an M4 uh, arrowhead, which is actually quite interesting. And this may be giving us some confirmation as to the presence of M4 arrowheads being used uh, as part of the arrows uh, on the Mary Rose. Um, it's not obviously conclusive because they haven't found any arrowheads of the, that type, but it is definitely a depiction of what I would believe to be an M4 or a Type 16 arrowhead on that arrow that's wounding the soldier in the diagram. So here we have quite a few of the bows and some arrows. And it's interesting with the arrows, um, we do know that from, you know, from research that the arrows were variable in their length. And it's really hard to see on the video that variability in the length, but um, they definitely are variable in their length from, uh, we'll talk from the knock to the shoulder of the arrow where the arrowheads would go, but there are no arrowheads on the actual arrows themselves, although they are using some plastic placeholders that uh, are mimicking Type 16s and those M4s that we talked about earlier, which is quite interesting. And to the left of them, you can see here, we have the staves without the horn knocks on them. Um, and like the arrows they are variable in their length and their thickness and the Mary Rose uh, bows themselves are estimated to be um, you know somewhere between 90 pounds and all the way up to 200 pounds it's hard to tell exactly the uh, weight of any of these bows uh, just on visual inspection but definitely usually the thicker the arrow uh, the bows are the uh, heavier in the draw weight they do uh, become but again that's not a, uh, a thing that is constant all the time you can have thinner staves that can be quite heavy and vice versa uh, but here are the bows themselves uh, on display with quite a few of the arrows so again we have here some uh, arrow shafts that have survived and we can see the variable length of the arrows themselves i believe the mean length of the arrows from the mirror rows was somewhere between 28 and 30 inches in draw length from valley knock to shoulder and we can see definitely the variability in the length of the arrows that are displayed here we have one bow shaft here okay that is actually quite girthy i would say that that one would probably have a high draw weight but again it's hard to tell um based on the thickness of the shafts alone 
um, but that one is quite dirty. I'm going to move across to some more staves here as well, and we have another one here, the second from the bottom. That one looks to be quite thick. Um, I can only speculate as to the draw weight of that bow, uh, but if we are going to assume that the thicker shafts are going to be high draw weight, I would imagine that that one would be a quite heavy bow, but again, there's no way of telling just by looking at it. Okay, so here we have some more uh, wall bow staves. Um, and again, like the earlier staves, these are a little bit closer to the staves so we can see the thickness of the, uh, the shafts themselves. And again, variable thickness like you, you would expect with these kind of non-homogenous handcrafted uh, weapons. Um, and again, though, it's really hard to be able to determine the draw weight of these bows just by looking at them. Again, my 113 pound bow uh, at 28 inches uh, by Ravenbeak, which is a, is a self bow, a U bow like these, um, is thicker than a lot of these ones. I would say it's probably similar thickness to uh, this one here, although I would think that without holding it in my hands, it's hard to tell definitively, but I think my 113 pound bow might be thicker. But there's a good chance that these actually have a higher draw weight than my 113 pound bow, although some of them may have a draw weight close to that draw weight of my bow as well. But it's very, very hard on observation, just with the eye alone, to be able to tell you know, what kind of draw weights these bows would have. So what we have here is most definitely crossbow bolts. Um, so no crossbows were found on the Mary Rose as far as I can tell, but they may have been actually fired out of the uh, arquebuses uh, themselves, or there may have been crossbows on board that just didn't survive, you know, obviously the sinking of the ship and the preservation until um, 1982 when they dug up the, uh, or they resurfaced the Mary Rose. Um, or they may very well have been just transporting crossbow bolts to war zones as part of the inventory because on board we have far more bows than we have archers as well so it's possible that they were transporting ammunition uh, on board the ship to go to an active war zone or they may have been as i said crossbows on board as well which they could use the crossbow bolts with but again there's no surviving arrowheads or crossbow uh, bolt uh, heads uh, but we do have the, the shafts here on display which is quite interesting and i actually did not know that uh, until I got here, which is really cool. One of the remains on board is believed to be that of a royal archer, a member of a special retinue raised by the king called the Spears of Honor. He was a particularly large man at 5 foot 10, and the find raises some speculation as to the reason why so many bows on board the Mary Rose were of such a high draw weight as they may belong to this elite retinue of archers. Here we got a spear, a halberd, and a bill. And actually, oh damn, I, this bill is incredibly thick. This, I, I had no idea that the uh, shaft of a bill would be so thick. Whereas the hull bar and the spear seem about right, you know, about the thickness of a bow shaft, uh, maybe a little bit thinner. Whereas the bill uh, is actually massive and really, really thick. Uh, that's really, really cool. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. For obvious reasons, I didn't you know, show you everything that was in, within the museum itself. I think that would be a little bit disrespectful that people come and pay money only for me to you know, show everything that was in the museum. There's a lot more to see here. I had a load of fun. Uh, I learned a load of stuff as well. There's a lot of interactive uh, experiences as well that I didn't show, particularly with one 3D show uh, where we have original footage of the divers themselves, as well as a video of how they did raise the Mary Rose out of the sea, which was absolutely incredible. But I highly, highly recommend people that are here in England, 
uh, that do travel to England uh, that do want to come to Portsmouth and see this museum, particularly if you're interested in that period of history as well as war bow archery. But there's far more on display than just the uh, war bow materials here at the Mary Rose Museum because the Mary Rose ship itself encompasses far more than just the archery side of, uh, of military and warfare. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and stay tuned for our next video.